when we first talked, you told me a story about uh, someone coming in to you with a LinkedIn learning funding request. But in yes. general, like, what's worked and what doesn't? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, we touched on, I, I'll touch on a couple things that we talked about. I think one is, you know, trust. Like, you know, if, if you are coming to me and saying, I want, you know, I want budget for this. And, you know, right or wrong, I'm looking at you as an individual and saying, like, is this someone that's been innovative and creative in, you know, building a learning program with the resources we already have and that they don't come to me for budget every time to do their job? I mean, like, I'm, you know, I'm judging you as a person, I'm judging maybe your organization on, you know, how creative have you been? I think that's one. I think there's just, and then, and then how well do you, you know, where, like, where is this need coming from? Is this a vitamin or a painkiller? <laughs> right, you've all heard that. Um, so like, why do you think, why do you think this is needed? Um, I think, so I think, I think that's one, right? It's kind of like the, I'm, com I'm coming with a preconceived notion before you even walk through the door. And I think second, um, you know, I think we, you know, as we look at just the different kinds of training, I think there's one, there's the technical training where, you know, there might be a specific need. Like, let's say your, your, your company's moving to the cloud. And so now you're going to have to train a whole bunch of people on new technology or you're gonna re-platform and everybody now needs to learn this new coding language, or not everybody, but a, you know, a group of people need to learn this new coding language. Um, you know, or whether you're in, you know, in tax and there's, you know, they overhauled the tax bill and you, know, you probably wouldn't offer that training, but um, you know, I think there's, there's, a specific, there's a specific business case where it's, it's gonna be very easy for you to build a case around that, right? We have, an objective for the organization, we need this training, and this is how much it's gonna cost, right? And I think that, you know, to, you know, to, you know, to provide metrics for a data, you know, a data-driven person, you know, you want to show engagement, and then you wanna show, you know, what you're actually trying to accomplish. So I think that, in that sense, it can be pretty straightforward. Um, but then I think you have to be really, really honest with yourself on what your objective is. Because it's not always that clean. Like it's not always uh, we're going to move to the cloud, and so people need to to learn this particular. You know, they need to learn Kubernetes, and lots of other things. Um, <laughs> um, but I think you have to be honest with yourself. Like that that is the ideal situation. On the other side, you know, is what is your objective truly just, you know, to improve your Glassdoor reviews? Because everyone else comments on. You're great benefits, you're a great company, but they don't invest in their, in their employees' learning. Or you've gotten really poor scores in your employee survey that, that you're, not, you know, you're not training people, you're not investing in people's um, growth, right? And so you, be really honest. We, ideally, we want it to be that first situation, but sometimes it's the second situation where what you're measuring is you're trying to get better glass door reviews because you're hopefully gonna recruit better people are, are having easier time recruiting, um, or you're gonna improve your retention. Like it's hard to tie it directly to the retention or the hiring, but it's just kind of this general building the employer brand. So I think it's first is to be honest on what you're trying to accomplish. Um, and then I think that that makes it a lot easier when you come back to me the next time and I say, well, you promised me people are gonna be more productive and they're gonna do their job better, but that's not what actually happened. Right, so I think I think if we're you know if you're honest with your finance person to start of what you're trying to accomplish, that'll just make you know the whole process easier, and you're gonna then have that trust and that transparency. Um, and then you know I think if it's really you know if everybody agrees that hey we're gonna do this for employer brand or employee <coughs> engagement, um, you know I think you can still measure that right. You can still measure. How much are people using the learning platform? You've got the you know, engagement measures, whether it's number of people who are active on it, you know, at least 30 minutes a month or whatever that metric may be, um, how many courses people take. Um, you know, I think you can measure it that way. Um, and the other thing that that's also watch out for is if you get a, you know a platform like let's say you know Linda or LinkedIn Learning now. And people are taking photography classes 
or, you know, knitting classes. I don't know if I'm knitting there, but, you know, like non-directly work-related things. If your goal is employee engagement, does it matter? Like, does it matter what courses they're taking? Because if all you care about is that people feel like you're investing in them in however, what, in whatever they want to learn, like, does it really matter if they're taking a photography class as opposed to, you know, how to code in Java, right? I mean, like, I guess I think that's the other, another conversation is, is the fact that they're using the platform enough to make it worthwhile? Because that makes people feel good about being part of this company. I think it's just really thinking through that and, and, and really kind of educating your finance person of, you can think of this as a company morale budget. It's really around morale. You can't measure the benefit, the ROI on the holiday party, right? And so training is, I, I see trainings in some cases as similar where you're just really showing that you care about your employee and you're wanting to invest in that. So have you ever, Justine, uh, <laughs> made a pitch for uh, Skillsoft in that kind of a, a context? As an employee benefit? Yeah. Absolutely. Um, I would say that like when it comes to metrics that matter, like measuring success, there's a lot of soft metrics, mm -hmm. right? Like a lot of assumptions are being made, mm -hmm. but we're trying to move away from measuring consumption and like actual content consumed because what actually matters in our opinion is has the employee learned what they needed to learn in time for them to apply it to their role. So I think that's a really important question to be asking. And that's and like a million dollar L&D question. Right. So I think we all want to know, how are you measuring that? Survey. Mm -hmm. survey. So, yeah. So we have some customers that they have skills off without a survey if they're doing a pilot. Others have survey metrics within their organization that they do like a pulse survey. Not everyone gets it all the time, so you're not being over surveyed. Um, but you kind of pick and choose by quarter or half annual what pocket that is and, and see what the numbers are. You get rid of the lows, you get rid of the top, and then your middle is the data you keep. Um, and those are the type of metric questions that we're going after. Because it, I think it is a really hard sale to sell it based on employee benefit. Um, I think that's a piece of it. And engagement is obviously a huge piece, but it's not necessarily what always secures the dollars for programs. So that would be like third rank of like where would we go in uh, to sell. So uh, before we move to the last question, which is gonna be focused again on engineering, um, if not learning, you know, when you're going to that finance person, what else do they care about? Is there something else we haven't covered? We talked about uh, employee morale. Um, doing it for the sake of you know checking a box sometimes i think diversity is an interesting one mm -hmm. because i think diversity and inclusion and belonging is important for all companies right now and everybody has some sort of mandate so how do you tie your learning initiatives into that mm -hmm. and i'm testing this out so this isn't like a perfect pitch but i i encourage you to go <laughs> test it and see what happens and let me know but so when i look at what skills offers we are truly a neurodiverse offering. We have learning for people who like watch, read, listen, or practice. So we're hitting all points. So is a learning solution you have in place today? Or maybe you have no learning solution. Being diverse and meeting your diversity mandate or what you promised to the organization. So like that's like another <coughs> avenue, I guess, that we're, we're trying to use. I, I don't have hard facts on that one yet, but that was interesting. Angle.